worked out. I was uh, hoping that the ladies were going to have their, their class because I had a message that I wanted to bring. I actually kind of preached this uh, there at Yokosuka when we went down there to help out with uh, Pastor Mike, and it was kind of the same thing. I guess the ladies split off and, and did their, their own class, and so it, uh, it worked out. I had to kind of change around the message a little bit uh, previ- or prior to getting down there to Yokosuka, but uh, it worked out, and so it was good. It was good to preach to those men that were down there. A lot, of, a lot of Navy guys, but again, we enjoyed going down there to help out, and so uh, it was good to be able to let Pastor, uh, Pastor Mike, he went to Germany, I guess he had preached uh, over there at several missionary churches, so again, it was good to be able to support that and kind of facilitate him going over there and uh, preaching the gospel to some of those new established missionary churches there in, in Germany. But uh, what I kind of wanted to talk about this morning, it's not going to be anything too, too long or too crazy. Um, but uh, one of the things that often I find myself struggling with is just kind of how I prioritize things in my life. Um, and as a man, I think we have a lot of expectations that are uh, levied on us, you know, as men and things that we are put in charge of, things that we're responsible for. One of those, obviously one of the biggest things is that we're responsible for our family. And uh, one day we're going to have to stand before God and we're going to have to give an account of how we um, led our family and what we, you know, had our family do and are, you know, making sure that we're bringing our kids up in the right uh, spiritual circumstances, I guess. And so that's kind of some of the things I want to talk about, just some of those, making sure that we have the right priorities. And where I want to start first off this morning is if you'll turn over to James chapter 4, we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 17. James chapter 4, verses number 13 through 17. And some of this I know I've, I've hit on a little bit, but uh, as I was thinking about this last night and this morning, bringing this message, one of the things I noticed is that I don't think there's ever going to be a point in our lives where we're just like, you know what, I'm, I made it, I arrived, I'm good. You know, there, I just don't ever think we're going to get to that point. You know, we're, we're going to constantly have things that we're going to have to work on. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of us will realize that there's a lot of same old habits that we constantly struggle with, right? We constantly, you know, fall down and we constantly are working on trying to fix a few of those things that uh, we, just, we just seem to always struggle with. And so you, if you look there, James chapter 4, starting in verse number 13, we'll read down through verses uh, 13 through 17. It says, Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And the one that I, the two verses I really like to highlight in that passage right there are, are 13 and 14. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the many blessings that you've given us, Lord, just those, those many blessings that, Lord, we just we don't deserve, Lord, but you've given them to us anyway. Lord, the most important one being that you sent your son to die on the cross, Lord, for our salvation. Lord, we just ask that you would help us to learn what you'd have us to learn this morning, Lord. Lord, help us to take it and apply it to our lives. Lord, we just pray that if there's one here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation. Lord, we think about all those yesterday that took a track, Lord. Lord, just pray that you would work on their hearts, Lord. Lord, pray that they might be um, spurred to come to church, Lord, here at Yakota Baptist Church, Lord, or that they would seek to know more about you and that they would come to know your Son as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I uh, pray for the other services today, Lord. I pray for uh, Brother Daniel as he'll be preaching in the next hour, Lord. I pray for Brother Tim as he'll be preaching tonight. Lord, I think about the McKittrick family, and just pray you'd watch over them as they get ready to come back. Lord, I pray you'd watch over the Truitts as they're in Georgia, still, still traveling. Pray, that, pray the Lord that you would bless that time with their son. And Lord, again, we just thank you for allowing them to be here with us these past few months. And Lord, again, we just ask that you'd help us to put, a cast, or put aside the things of the world, Lord, cast those to the side, help us to learn what you have us to learn this morning. We pray these things in your name. Amen. So, yeah, I, I really like to... Excuse me, I really like to highlight those verses there, 13 and 14, because I think we get so focused on the things that we have going on, and a lot of times the, the focus is, is, is going somewhere to try to make money. And obviously that is a thing that we have to do as men. Uh, we are required 
you know, that is part of the, the support that we have to give to our family is we, you know, typically we have to have a job, right? I mean, you have to have money, you have to have income, there's so many things that you have to buy, you have to put food on the table, you have to put clothing, you know, on, uh, on your kids, uh, you have a spouse that you have to take care of. Um, I, I went out with some people from work the other day, we had it going away, and that was one of the big things that a lot of us talked about is that it's uh, a lot different once you have a spouse that now you're, you're, she's relying on you to take care of her, you know. And it was funny how a lot of us, uh, we realized that we were pretty immature, and then by the time, you know, we got married, it was like, oh, I really need to do something with my life so I can, I can make sure I'm taking care of my spouse properly. And a lot of us, that was kind of our, our path to getting to the military was like, well, you know, I, don't, I didn't really go to school, um, you know, or like if you're like me, you went and you kind of didn't take it seriously. You know, I wasn't really into the whole college thing. And then just shortly thereafter, I was like, well, you know what? I'll join the military. And then it's like, oh, by the way, you know, the military comes along with a lot of schooling itself. And so I found myself, you know, like, hey, I tried to join to get away from going to school. And now you're telling me I got to go to tech school. I got to do like a year of on-the-job training, you know, basically just constantly more schooling, more training. And so it was just interesting to see how that all came about and how a lot of us, uh, like I said, were once we got married and we realized we had somebody we had to take care of, it was like, oh, yeah, I, I need to take my life a little bit more seriously. And so I think for applicable to us as men, we often get focused on things like our career and, like I said, putting food on the table, making sure we're taking care of our kids, ensuring we prepare for our future. I know that's a big one for me, retirement, um, saving for kids' college, and ultimately being ready for retirement. However, uh, I think, like I said, we have to be careful about what, is God, what does God want for our lives. I don't think that those things, you know, preparing for our future, whether it be retirement, saving for kids' college, um, you know, I, those aren't bad things to me. Those aren't bad things. But I think what we have to be careful with is we have to find a balance. They can't be, those, those things can't just take control of our life and be all that we're focused on. And because I think like it says here in James, you know, we can get so focused on that, those things and then our life is just going to pass us by. It's just, you know, it's short. It's but a vapor. And so one other thing that I, I learned, um, I, I feel like for us, for me and my family, we did a lot of growing in Utah. There was a lot of things that God was using um, to show us like what we needed to be doing and we just, we just learned a lot. We were like sponges as far as, like I guess, a spiritual sponge, and we were just absorbing a lot of things. Um, but I started to learn some basic, simple truths, and that was that I, you know, I kind of like how Pastor Truett talked about, you know, your orders don't come from, you know, AFPC or whatever. They really come from God, and I think that's so true because I don't think it was any coincidence that I wound up in Utah. I don't think it was any coincidence that I learned so much being out there. Um, but one of the biggest things that I learned is you know, whenever we're trying to plan, and I know Brother Daniel's kind of going through this right now, you know, you're trying to plan, you're trying to figure out, okay, where, where do I need to go next? What do I need to do? Um, I think a lot of times we get, again, so focused on our career. What's the right move for me? What do I need to do next? How am I going to progress in this job? Um, how am I going to make more money? How am I going to get the next promotion? I think sometimes, you know, unfortunately, we leave God out of it. You know, we forget to stop and sit down and we forget to pray and ask God to show us where we need to go. And that was one of the things that I learned from our pastor there in Utah, is he would talk about many messages and, and being a military church, there were people constantly in and out, you know, coming and going. And the one thing he would always stop and ask them about, you know, their next career move is, hey, wherever you're going, is there a good local Bible preaching Baptist church there? And it's like, it's so simple, right? But we, we oftentimes, we stop to think about that. And we fail to ask God, hey, is this where I'm supposed to go? I would venture to say if there's not a good local Bible preaching church there, that may not be where God wants you to go, right? Because you got to think about it. How spiritually sound is your family going to be if you move to a new town or a new base or whatever, and there's no local church for them to plug into, you know? There's nowhere for them to grow spiritually. If, uh, if you move to that new town. And so I think those are some of the things that we need to stop and we need to consider and we need to prayerfully ask God, hey, is this where you want me to go? And so, um, again, looking at James 4, verses 15 there, verse 15, for, we, for, that we ought to, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. And that's kind of the thing that I want us to consider right there about just different assignments is that we need to stop and we need to ask God, hey, is this where you'd have me to go? 
Is this where you'd have my family to go? Is this where they're somewhere they're going to be able to plug in and they're going to be able to grow spiritually and learn a lot from, from about your word? And so I know I've mentioned it a little bit. I know we've got some new people in here before, but that's thankfully God allowed us to do that with coming here to Japan. Um, we were able to stop, kind of slow down. Um, it just worked out where we were at the end of our enlistment. And I always say we because I think it should be a family decision, right, especially you and your spouse about where you're going to go. But we were able to kind of stop, slow things down. We were able to make a list of pros and cons about coming here. Uh, we knew that the church was here. I've mentioned this before. Again, I don't think it was coincidence. Uh, backing up for a second, don't think it was coincidence we were in Utah. And I definitely don't think it was coincidence that we got orders to come here to Japan because we had, you know, the, uh, the family there in Utah. And, you know, they were just beyond excited for us to come here. Um, you know, they knew that there was a good church here for us to plug into. Um, they knew about the area. And, I, you know, it's just things like that. When you get orders to somewhere and somebody's been there before and they just happen to be in your church, I think worldly people would say, oh, that's just coincidence. But I don't, I don't think so. That was God had a plan all along, you know, back before I was, you know, before I was even born. He had a plan for my life, and he has a plan for your life. And so, I, again, I would just stress to you, you know, moving forward, just give God Make sure you're, you're asking him, you know, where, where do I need to go? What's going to be best for my family? What's going to be good for me spiritually as far as, as growing? And God's got a plan. We just have to stop and we have to think and we have to uh, seek it out. And so moving on, point number two is that, kind of like I've already alluded to, unfortunately, especially us as men, we often become hyper-focused on things like our jobs, careers, providing for our family, and preparing for our own, for ours and our children's future. Um, and when I talk about, you know, kind of, preparing for our children's future. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always looking, okay, where do I need to put money into for college? Uh, I think that's a big thing. We all know that just college is becoming like astronomically expensive. Um, so that's something, you know, I think you have to consider. You have to also consider, you know, about your, uh, like I said, your own retirement, making sure that, you know, you're ready for when you exit, you know, the job market, I guess, as when you get to that age and when you're ready to, to be done with that. And so, I think those are just, they all add up, and they're all just different little stressors of, of things that we have going on. Um, but, you know, like I said, these things aren't necessarily wrong, but oftentimes we just become so stressed and we wor are worked up about these things, um, and that is wrong. That's where I think, you know, we're, when we allow those things to come into our lives, and we just, again, we're so, we're already so hyper-focused on those things, and then, you know, now we're getting to the point where we're completely stressed out by it, you know what I mean? And we're allowing those things to consume us. How much are we really being used by the Lord to further the gospel? Um, I would venture to say how, how much are we being used and uh, being a good, that good leader for our family if we're so focused on those other things and we're so worked up and we're so stressed out. Um, I don't know about for you guys, but uh, I grew up, my dad was like that as a kid. Um, unfortunately, you know, my dad is an extremely hard worker, um, very passionate. But definitely, you could tell, you know, that he let a lot of those things get under his skin. And then, lo and behold, of course, I'm, you know, a lot like him as well. And so a lot of times, you know, I find myself falling into that same trap. And so I'll come home and, and I'll be, you know, kind of worked up about how the day went, you know. Um, you know, this pilot did this, you know, wasn't listening to me or whatever, you know, whatever the case might be, right? And, uh, or a lot of times, you know, I'm sure you guys go through the same things. You've got different, different things going on at work, different people. You know, you don't quite, you don't quite connect with them. You know, they've got, kind of got their own way that they want to do things. And then, you, you know, you've got your, your way that you think it should be done. And there's a lot of strife and tension there. And so I, I've caught myself a lot. And I think it's easier said than done. A lot of people, you know, I'll talk to other people about it, talk to other men about it. And they're like, you, you just got to leave that stuff at the door. You know, when you, when you come home, it's time to be home. It's time to be that dad. But I think, unfortunately, being very passionate about what I do and, you know, having, I guess, caring, it's hard to leave that stuff at home, you know what I mean? Or leave that stuff at work. And so it's, and it's actually kind of ironic, I think, too. I'm, I'm, it's easier for me to leave family stuff and personal life stuff at home and go to work than it is the other way around. I bring work home with me a lot. And uh, really, probably you would think it should be the other way around. But I think it really just depends on how God's made you, how you're wired. You know, I just happen to be wired where I'm very passionate about what I do. I want to do a good job. Um, and I will say this. I think this is something that uh, I try to challenge myself often, too, about. I oftentimes get too worried about what other people think. 
I get too worried about trying to impress this person or that person or my boss, or I want you know these people to think that I'm doing a good job, that I'm a good air traffic controller. But I'll, but I'll say, you know, is that really who we should be trying to please? Should we try be trying to please men? No, we should be trying to make sure that we're doing a good job for our Lord and Savior. And so, again, that, that's another challenge in and of itself, just to try to make sure that we're not worried about pleasing those that are around us. We should really be trying to please uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I've often uh, brought this passage up, but if you'll turn over with me to Matthew chapter 6. Like I said, this is... Um, something that I struggle with. I think, I think there's going to be things that we're just going to constantly struggle with. And like I said, we're never going to get to that point where we've just arrived. We're never just going to be like, oh, you know what? I made it. I have no more problems. I have, uh, I'm the perfect human being. I'm the perfect Christian. We're always going to have stuff that we are struggling with. And this one for me, a lot of these things just happen to be um, a big, I guess, thorn in my side, if you will. And so I, I like to share it. I like to try to um, help you guys as I'm working on myself, but again, I, it's always going to be a work in progress until, you know, that day that we're with God in glory, amen. So Matthew chapter 6, starting there in verse number 25, it says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I like to always highlight that too, O ye of little faith. I often find myself in that category. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed, for after, wherefore, excuse me, wherewithal shall we be clothed, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so... Me personally, I love every single verse in this short little passage here where uh, chapter uh, 6 ends 25 through 34. I think I've mentioned this before as well, my Bible. Uh, the Schofield Bible actually says the cure of anxiety, trust in the Father's care, and I've actually like circled that. And I think I mentioned this before too. When I was in tech school, I actually wanted, I actually tried to like self-eliminate myself. I was like, I was like, I got to remember all this stuff. I got to remember like what the, all these pilots are supposed to do. I was like, ah, I'm good. Like, I, just give me something else like that's easier. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. I just didn't want to do it. And they were like, well, you can't self-eliminate. And so, you know, I was like, all right. So um, really, at that point, I really started trying to turn it over to God and really let him, you know, and, and I think God put me in that situation for a reason. You know what I mean? And like I said, I find myself in situations where I think I know God has put me there for a reason. And it's especially been really relevant this, this past year is that I'll, I'll try to stop and think, okay, God, what are you trying to teach me? And so I think back then, God was trying to teach me, hey, you know, like he is still today. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter where I put you. I want you to lean on me. I want you to trust in me. I want you to give everything over to me and let me take care of you. And so Kate and I, we actually used to sit down at the end of the day uh, there. She was only a few hours away, and she'd come down on the weekends, but typically during the week, a lot of times we would actually get on the phone together and we would actually read through this chapter, uh, chapter 6, 25 through the end, and we'd read other scripture, just trying to remember that God was in control and that his plan is ultimately the only plan and he's going to take care of you, like he says here. And so the one, you know, a couple of the things that I really take from this passage are, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? There in verse 26. And it reminds me, like, okay, he takes care of the birds of the air. Surely he's going to take care of us, right? And he goes on to say, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And again, like I said, O ye of little faith. I put myself in that category because I'm like, man, I just don't have the faith like I need to have, you know? 
um, because I'm constantly worried about some of the things that he goes on to mention. Take therefore, uh, therefore take no thought, saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. I think we, like I said, we get worried about those things, um, you know, not, not just in the present, but like I said, looking towards the future, retirement, making sure we're taking care of ourselves. But God's telling us right here in his word, don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about it. You know, and again, I, I don't think it's inherently wrong to, to focus on those things from time to time and kind of have a plan for your future, but it shouldn't be to where it's just that's all we're about, making sure that we're taken care of today, tomorrow, we're making sure we're taking care of our kids. We have to find that balance, and we have to be, I think it's, just, it's crucial for us as men to be that balance for our families. And so again, it, we just, but we get caught up in making sure that we have the money to do those things. And verse 32, for after all these things that the Gentiles seek, but the ultimate thing is, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. And verse number 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And there's, that's what we ultimately we need to be focused on, is seeking first the kingdom of God. And he's going to take care of all those things. We just need to kind of put the blinders on and focus on God and not let all the other things that come into our lives kind of try to lead us astray. And so, like I mentioned, uh, talked a little bit about tech school. I know I've talked about that before. would read this passage of Scripture a lot, um, and it's definitely always stayed with me. It's always uh, been there for me, um, as God's Word is often, you know, when you are constantly reading it and absorbing it, there's just different situations that come up, and these different verses come to mind, and it's always been a comfort to me, and I, I really enjoy that passage of Scripture. And so, if you will, let's uh, look at another passage of Scripture, kind of, Point number three here, if you will. Turn over to Matthew chapter 11. I want to start looking at uh, verses 28 through 30 there. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse number 29, Take my yoke upon you, and le learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so, does anybody know exactly, anybody in here know what a yoke is? When I did this, yeah, I had to, I had to look it up. I felt like I should know, um, but I actually looked it up, and it says, according, or according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, a yoke is a wooden bar or frame by which two draft animals, such as oxen, are joined at the heads or necks for working together. And so, um, my grandparents actually grew up on a farm, so it's kind of a shame that I didn't know that. I, I kind of had an idea, and I had heard that you know, that verse a lot, but I was like, yeah, my, my, my grandfather probably wouldn't be too happy with me. He'd be like, you don't know what a yoke is? Um, so, but I looked that up, and uh, obviously, as we kind of look beyond that, you know, God commands us to cast our cares upon him, and he says to take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so, as we've kind of seen, we kind of see all these things that we, you know, get focused on, but God wants us to cast our cares upon him, right? There's that song, you know, cast your cares upon him. And it's just, it's so easy, right, but it's so hard at the same time. It's so easy, yet it's so, it's, uh, it's so hard. Easier, easier said than done, right? I'm sure we've all heard that phrase a lot before, you know? And uh, I think there's a lot of things in the Bible that are like that. You know, we, we, God commands us to do things, and we just think, eh, yeah, I don't know, God, I don't, that's, that's really hard. You know, one thing I'll bring up, and I'll give a personal account to it, is, is uh, track distribution, right? yesterday. Um, I don't know what it is, right, but it is just hard sometimes to, for some reason, to, you know, give a track to somebody. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think it's a little bit easier for the Japanese, for me, to give them a track because I kind of just hold it out, and I don't really know what to say to them, right, and I don't know too much Japanese, so I'm just hoping that they'll take it. And we did have quite a few that would take it, you know, you just kind of hold it out and they would take it, and like I mentioned earlier, you hope that, uh, you know, God will, the Holy Spirit will work on them and show them their need for a Savior. But I, I definitely struggle with, there were a couple people that came by that actually spoke English. And this one, this one gentleman in particular was kind of funny because I was like, do you speak English? And he was like, no. And I was like, do you speak English? And he was like, no. And I was like, and I'm pretty sure I asked him three times because I was so caught off guard. He kept saying no, like perfectly, like crystal clear. And I was like, I think the third time I was like, do you speak English? He was like, yes. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, can I give you this? And he was like, uh, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, it was just the weirdest thing. You know, he, like, we just went back and forth for a second. And uh, I don't know if he was, he might have been German, I think, maybe. But he definitely spoke English. I don't know if his, like, wires were crossed because he's, like, 
trying to tell me he doesn't speak English because he knows I'm trying to give him something, you know, for church, like a track. And I don't know if him, like, me asking him, like, three times just caught him off guard. And he finally was like, yes, I mean, you know, no, I mean, yes. And it was like, okay, can I give you a track? No. So, but uh, I'll be honest, like, there were a couple other guys, you know, that I, that I knew spoke English. And I just, I just had this, I had a hard time, you know, opening up about the gospel. And it, it's like, why? You know, God commands us to do that. But here I am, again, struggling with that and uh, struggling with the flesh, right? Struggling with the flesh, struggling with just worried. I'm worried, again, about what people are going to think, right? But we need to be focused on that soul needs to be saved, right? That soul needs to go to heaven. And if not me or you, you know, who, who is going to be a witness to him? Who's going to witness to him? Who's going to witness to all these, you know, Japanese that are around us that have no clue, you know, about the gospel? You know, uh, I think, you know, we're blessed to have grown up in the States. And I know I was blessed to grow up in the Bible Belt where, you know, the Bible's pushed down your throat. But you think about it. And it's like, wow, what a blessing that that was the case, right? I think, uh, I think back as a kid, and I used to be like, oh, man, we got to go to church again. You know, but now look at, look at now we have the opportunity to go, and we have the opportunity to share the gospel, whereas I got it just, you know, it was like second nature to be, you know, to get drugged to church, right? You know, I've heard, have you heard people say, oh, he was drugged? Yeah, I was drugged to church, you know, as a kid. And so um, I just think about, you know, what a shame it is that for me, you know, I'm just worried about what these people are going to think you know, about me, and, and, oh, are they judging me because I'm going to try to give them a track? Who cares, you know? Like I said earlier, it's same thing at work. Who cares what people think? And so, again, when I'm preaching this message, I'm definitely preaching myself, but just got to quit worrying about what people think, and we got to realize that God has commanded us to go out there and preach the gospel and go out there and give those, the gospel to those that are around us, those that have no clue about who Jesus Christ is and invite them to church or just witness to them there on the spot and like I said, I, I definitely struggled with it. But I, I, I want to use this as an opportunity. I want to challenge you, right? We only had three people that came out yesterday to pass out tracks. And so, um, you know, I, I would try to challenge you to please be here when we go out and give out the gospel, you know, and try to come out. And it doesn't matter if, I don't care, do like me. Just sit there and, you know, kind of stick it out and pray that a couple people will take it, you know. We always pray before we go out that God will just use this as an opportunity for people that don't know him you know, to possibly learn about him, to possibly, uh, you know, get saved. And so, like I said, hopefully they're taking that thing and they're looking at it, you know, and we take a couple English ones. And so hopefully some of those people read about it or they might have questions. I actually had a, uh, now that I think about it too, another English guy actually came up to me and said, hey, you know, what's this? And I'm, you know, I was like, oh, hey, it's a track for our church. We're over here in Yakota. Uh, you know, love to have you come out. He's like, okay, cool. And he took it and was like, real, you know, real happy about taking it. And uh, he was with a couple uh, Japanese ladies there, and they were just coming down the stairs. But yeah, I would just use that. You just be a part of that, you know. Um, something that something else I was thinking about before preparing this message, and and uh, something that God kind of laid on my heart is, and something I need to be better about is we we often are worried about our finances, right? We're worried about, like I said, we're worried about things like, okay, what you know, how much money do I have, you know. Oh man, I got a uh, you know I got my tithe check. I got a ten percent right right off the bat, and we should be doing that. You know, ten percent is kind of a minimum that God commands us to give. But have you ever thought about the ten percent of your time? I don't know if you've heard preachers talk about that, but I think that's a really good valid point. Is ten percent of our time? You know, we need to be giving ten percent of our time to God, and that should be outside of our you know daily Bible reading that we should be doing. You know, our prayer time. That should be you know what am I doing to serve the Lord with my time? And I don't know about you guys, but I think about, I was thinking about that, and I was like, you know, I think about all the time that I waste. You know, um, my two biggest things that are, are just, you know, they just are doomed. Productivity is doomed whenever you, like, sit down, and A, it's you sit down and watch TV, or B, you sit down and you're just going through your phone. You know what I mean? Just going through, oh, what does Fox News have to say today, or, you know, what is what is Apple trying to push down my throat with, you know, CNN and all this other stuff, you know what I mean? Like, what is the different stories that I'm looking at? And, like, I'll look up and I'll be like, I've been sitting here for, like, an hour just looking at my phone or, or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, what, what could I be doing with my time, you know what I mean? So, and I guess I say that to say, what could I be doing at home that would free up time elsewhere for me to be able to do something for God, right? You know what I mean? Just all that wasted time. And so I would challenge you to 
think about trying to give 10% of your time to the Lord, you know, whether it be coming out for track distribution, whether it be getting involved here at the church and, and finding something that you can help out with. I mean, there's just so many opportunities, right? There's just so many things that you can do. Um, I would say, I would challenge you to grab tracks. Grab tracks when you go outside. They're, they're all sitting in there as you go out there to the left in your hallway. Just leave them, places that you go, you know? I was, I mean, I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, well, I saw these boards up in the, in the train station. I was like, what if I just started, like, you know, putting these things up here on the board so when people walk by, maybe it'll grab their attention, you know what I mean? I'm sure they wouldn't like that, but, I mean, you always just be like, ah, I don't know, I'm just American. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, in all reality, I don't know. But uh, th- those are things I think about. Um, when you go to the gas station and you pump gas, you know, leave a track there hanging out, and somebody might come by and they might be like, oh, what's this sticking out, you know what I mean? And they may read it and be like, you know, you just, we don't know. We don't know what God's going to do with those things, right? So, again, just challenge you to, to think about using 10% of your time. So, next uh, passage of scripture I want to look at, I want to flip over to 1 Peter 5, chapter 5, verses 6 through 7. A lot of this stuff just kind of, like I said, ties into things I have going on in my life, things that I like to uh, try to help you guys with. And I think it was good that we uh, had this opportunity of being here just as uh, men this morning. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses uh, 6 and 7, starting there, verse number 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And verse number 8, I also like that one as well. It's a good one. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Kind of like I talked about with those things that take away our time, uh, we know that, that those things are used by the devil to try to take our focus away from God. You know, there's a lot of things that just, uh, like I said, they keep us from being focused on God, they keep us from being focused on our families, uh, they keep us from making sure that we're the spiritual rock that we need to be for our families. And so I, I just think, the ultimate, really the ultimate message and the ultimate thing that I want you to take away from this message is really just to focus your life on God. Like I said, be that horse with the blinders on where you're just moving forward. You know, you're casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. We're focusing on God. He's going to take care of all the little things, all the little things that uh, we think are big things, but God can do anything, right? So they're little things to him. And we just need to be focused on God and we just need to let a lot of those other things, you know, those other things go. And I think in doing that, like I said, we're going to become that spiritual rock that we need to be for our family. We're going to be able to focus on their spiritual needs. And ultimately, too, we're going to be able to fulfill the Great Commission, right? Like I said, we we weed out some of those things that just take away so much of our time. And we're able to sit down and we're able to really connect with God. We're able to say, okay, God, what would you have me to do with my life? You know, ultimately, what would you have me to do so I can see souls saved, right? That's, That's ultimately the biggest thing, the Great Commission. And again, we can help. Uh, I don't know if you guys think about this. I think about this a lot. I like, uh, who in here has heard of Dave Ramsey? I know I've talked about him a couple times. Really like Dave Ramsey. The one, the big thing I really like about him, and I think it applies spiritually um, also, is the legacy. What kind of legacy are we leaving, you know, for our families? Um, I don't know if you've got, I'm sure you guys have heard him talk about changing your family tree. Um, That's a big one for me. Uh, My parents set me up in the right way as far as finances go. But uh, we were able to kind of take that one step further. You know, they were kind of, you know, bogged down by, like, credit card debt and things like that. And the one thing they always said is, hey, just don't, don't ever get a credit card. Don't ever go down that path, you know, where you're getting yourself into debt and it kind of opens up, you know, getting yourself into trouble. And I like listening to his podcast and these people call in and, you know, they do their debt-free screen. And the coolest thing to me is that they're, they're just changing, especially if they have kids, they're just changing their family tree. They're leaving that lasting legacy um, because, you know, he, he gets you – Um, focus on things, you know, like retirement. You know, like I said, I think, again, I think he knows the balance, though, because, you know, he's always talking about making sure, you you know, you're giving your 10% and things like that. But he's constantly talking about changing that family tree, making sure that you set your kids up for success down the road, and obviously that you yourself are are taken care of. But I really like that, how um, we are able to, um, through, I guess, that financial means, we're able to change our, our legacy and uh, our, fin- our family tree. But I think if we look at that through a spiritual uh, lens, we can do the same thing. If we're focused on God like we need to be and we're doing the right things, we're going to be the right leader that we need to be for our family, and we can ultimately have them grow up, you know, to become saved, you know what I mean? I pray 
pray for, so Raleigh, you know, she's confessed that she knows Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, which is awesome. You know what I mean? Appreciate all the, the Sunday school workers stuff in here, or here, the Sunday school workers that kind of really, you know, got her to focus on that, you know, and it got her at home. She, she was able to realize, like, I need to be saved, you know what I mean? And so she was able to come to know the Lord uh, as her Lord, and, or Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. But I pray the same thing for Easton, right? He, he really doesn't, I mean, he's just learning to talk. He's just learning to uh, kind of put, you know, a few words together. But oftentimes, you know, I'll pray not only that he comes to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but that he grows up to serve, you know, our Lord and Savior. Uh, pray for his spouse, future wife, right? Because that's important. Again, that's that, that part, you know, it's a team, right? It's not just one person. Um, it definitely takes a team to get through life, and we know life is challenging. And I don't know what I would do without Caitlin, um, but it's about being that team. So pray for him to have, you know, a godly, a godly spouse. Um, but again, that he'll grow up and that he will serve him, right? And that he will be the servant that God wants him to be. And to be able to do that, we first have to change our, our legacy, our family tree, making sure that we're leaving the right legacy, right? And so, again, it all comes through doing what we're supposed to be doing as far as men, as far as what God would have us to do spiritually. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring to you this morning. I know I've talked a, bit, a little bit about it in the past, but I think it's important. Um, I think it's extremely important. I don't know about you guys, but like I said, I, I just these are things that I tend to struggle with day in and day out. And I don't think it's not until I get out of this, this body, this earthly body, that I will overcome that. Um, but God can continue to do a, a great and mighty work in all of us, and he's going to continue to try to help us to get where we need to be, but it's just going to be a constant daily battle. Um, I would say, again, another challenge is just to try to die daily, like Paul talks about to the flesh. I know for me, it's hard. It's so hard. I mean, they're just like on Friday. You know, I totally gave in to the flesh. I was like, yeah, I just don't really feel like getting up and going running today. And it just kind of sets the, the tone for the rest of the day. And, you know, I, I know um, that's not necessarily a spiritual thing, but I think because I gave in to the flesh and decided to be lazy, I, I tend to think that I am going to fail uh, or I'm weak in other areas, especially spiritually as well. And so that's one thing I would challenge you with. I know uh, one thing I took away from Pastor Parrott being here, I don't know if you guys remember, he talked about one day, uh, I guess he had a pastor friend that would... Uh, he would, he, would, he would take cold showers. He's like, I'm not giving in to the flesh today. I'm going to take a cold shower. I'm not to that point yet. I definitely like my, I definitely like my hot showers, but um, on those mornings where I haven't run and I was just lazy and gave in to the flesh, I'm like, man, I really should just, I guess I should feel like I should be punishing myself by taking a cold shower because I've already given in, you know what I mean? But here I am taking a warm shower, you know. And, but uh, again, those, those are, I mean, hey, we should be thankful for that. We should be thankful that we have the ability to do that. And so I, ho I hope that was, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that hopefully challenges you a little bit. Um, I would venture to say we're all men, right? We're all probably struggling with a lot of the same things or very similar things. And so uh, let's go ahead and we'll pray and uh, we'll get ready for the next hour. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the many blessings that you've given us, Lord. Just those so many things that we don't deserve, Lord, and that you've graciously, graciously given to us. Especially, Lord, uh, your son coming down to this earth, Lord and dying on the cross for our sins. And Lord, I just pray on that note, if there's one here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation, Lord. That's the first step. They've got to come to know your Son as their Lord and Savior, Lord, and then they can start to be, be changed, Lord, and have that great and mighty work done in them, Lord, and they can be used by you mightily, Lord. And Lord, uh, we know that in this area, there is a great and mighty need, Lord, and we need many laborers, Lord. Uh, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us to do those things that we need to do as men to be that spiritual rock for our family, Lord. Pray that we can give the guidance and direction that we need to as men for our families. And Lord, uh, just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. I pray that you'd be with the services to come. Pray that you'd be with us for the rest of the, rest of the day. Bring us back again tonight, Lord, after the morning services. And uh, help us to be ready to go. Help us to open our hearts and minds for both services, Lord, to learn what you have us to learn. And Lord, I just pray these things in your name. Amen.